Welcome to the final part of the on-page SEO module. In this, we're going to talk about how to audit your website, again, specifically from an on-page SEO perspective. Now, again, if you haven't already, I highly recommend you go back and watch the previous videos in this module because we're really going to talk about how to audit for the issues we already discussed. So if you don't know what those issues are, you don't know why they're important, and you don't know what exactly we're doing here, then, well, it really won't make any sense. This is more of a practical implementation video, but you need to actually understand what we're talking about before you can go through that. Now, moving on, we're just going to go through each element one by one, starting with page URL to explain how exactly we'd order for this and what exactly you would look for. And if you don't remember, this is the page URL highlighted in yellow right here, which is best smoker reviews, as in it's the address or URL of the page. Now, the few things that we want to look at here, potential issues really that we're going to be highlighting and, and looking further into, that is a length over 115 characters. Now, does it have to be 115 characters? No, it could be less, it could be more. But generally speaking, again, shorter URLs are better. So if you see a really, really long URL, it's something to investigate further into and decide, hey, is this impractical, both from an SEO perspective, but also from a user perspective. Secondly, you want to look into things like spaces, is it like uppercase or underscores, or just like bad delimiters, bad spaces between URLs. So for example, if you have a page and someone put a space in it, it's very, very hard to type in that URL into the address bar, right? Because it ends up going to like percent 20 and it just looks really bad, it looks really weird. Same with underscores, it's not really typical for URLs. It should be like a little hyphen, it shouldn't be an underscore, it's a bad delimiter. And then also just for uppercase, what happens if you have an uppercase character in your URL and it only recognizes under the uppercase character? So if you type in that same URL without the uppercase letter, then it can give you a 404 page that can cause issues. Okay, so it just things to look into just like that. And then another thing is parameters. Parameters is we see something like question mark something equal. So on YouTube, we have youtube.com slash watch question mark V equals the video ID. And that's perfectly fine. It works, okay? But generally speaking, it's not great to have parameters on your website because you want to optimize the URLs. So it's really just not a user-friendly way of doing things. Again, generally speaking, YouTube obviously do that fine. And generally speaking, if you have parameters, usually it's not optimized URLs. So by default, with WordPress, for example, we have um, question mark P equals one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right? For the pages and blog posts. So it's just not user friendly. So it's just, again, it doesn't mean it's a problem, but this is potential issues that we want to look into. Now, again, this video isn't about theory, it's about showing you how exactly you would do this. So I'm going to explain what exactly you're looking to, then go into how exactly to do that. So the way I'm going to do that is using a tool called Screaming Frog. And what I've done is I pulled up one of the example sites we looked at previously in the keyword research module. And we're going to go through these issues specifically for URL. And then we'll go through title tags or the rest of it. And then back and forth between here's what to do, then here's how to do it. Here's what to do, then here's how to do it. So this is Screaming Frog. It's a great tool for technical auditing and just auditing in general. And we're using this for on page currently. And what I've done is I've checked out a website here, Jim Wagon. We looked at them previously. They're a Shopify store. And I've just done a basic crawl of their site. You can see here, however many pages there are, um, 1,600 HTML pages. And you can see, basically, just it's just a typical site. Now, the first one, again, we mentioned was URL. So how do we do that? Well, we can do it in two ways, but we can click up here, URL. But we can also go down to here and just have a look at this, OK? So what we can see here is, OK, all URLs. We want to see all URLs. You can also see, OK, uppercase, sorry, uppercase. You can see here, some of them are uppercase. Now, are any of these issues? Well, let's have a look at them, okay? Now, normally, just so you guys know, I wouldn't actually do this inside of Screaming Frog. Personally, I would export all of this data, put it into a spreadsheet, and then use some formulas and stuff to kind of clean it up and pull out the information that you want. But let's just keep this simple because anyone can do this, and I don't really want to give away everything that I do in my own agency. So we'll just show how to use inside of Screaming Frog firstly, okay? So here are three examples where they have uppercase in the URL. Now, are any of these issues? Let's have a look. The first one, it's not an issue because it's parameters, okay? It's just parameters being added. And if you scroll across, you can also see, probably you scroll down through here somewhere, you should be able to see the canonical link here is this, so canonical element. You can see here, it's canonicalized to the main page without the parameters. This is set up correctly. Likewise, for the other one, exactly the same deal. It's canonicalized. The problem, um, by the way, if you don't know what canonicals are, don't worry about it. This isn't a technical SEO video. We're going to get into that in the next video. The potential issue one here is this one, which is um, a tag, basically. So blogs slash news. So the way Shopify works is 
everything is slash blogs and you have a, a type of blog. So you can have news, you can have other blogs basically. You have multiple blogs on a single store. And then you have tags, which is this one here. Now, I would say that realistically, tags shouldn't be indexed in the first place because it's just not a good type of thing to do. But luckily, you can see here, non-indexable, but obviously it's probably more likely because it's a 404 page. So again, this isn't really an issue. But again, I would just want to look through this and just see if there's any occurrences of this that are actually issues. Likewise, you can see here, underscores. And again, what we're looking at, both of them parameters, we already know they're canonicalized because default behavior in Shopify. So these are not an issue. We can also see parameters here. Again, we can scroll through these and check them out. In this case, I can see this is pagination, this is pagination, and so on. None of these are issues. They're all um, dealt with by default within Shopify. There's no issues with this. Again, we'd verify this in a technical SEO stage, but I already know this is perfectly fine. So I'm just looking if there's any other issues, but obviously this is Shopify, so I know there isn't going to be the only one potential one that could be, but I'm not seeing it here. Um, variants, again, they're canonicalized. You have a look there. It's canonicalized to the main page, not an issue. And so on. Now, this is, again, on the verge of, of really technical SEO more than anything else, more than on page, but it's just something to look into to see if it's been set up in general. But for the most part, you can see here, all of these are actually set up correctly. So slash collection, slash the name of that collection. So for the most part, these are correct. This is just pagination on top of it. And there is another issue, but I'm not seeing it on their page, which is uh, vendors for Shopify specifically as a platform. The other things we can look into, um, obviously you can look into this, but there's none. Contains a space, you can see some of them contain a space, but again, this is in the parameters, not the actual page URL, which is again canonicalized. The other thing, again we mentioned previously, is gonna be this final one here, which is long URL, so over 150 characters. Again, on this site specifically, there is no issues. The reason is, again, it's parameters, so it doesn't count. Again, the only actual URL is, is if you look at my screen here, you can see this is the actual URL here. Um, just the extra stuff is parameters that can change. It doesn't matter whatsoever, okay? Now, again, on this site now, there's no issues. Sometimes you will find issues. I'm just showing you how to identify it, what to look for, and you can repeat the same process for your own websites. Typically, um, with bigger sites that have less SEO knowledge, we tend to find issues, but it also depends on the platform. In this case, uh, Shopify has some issues, but URLs generally they get just about right with no real issues, okay? Next, we have title tags, which looks just like this. It shows in the Google search results. And usually, again, as mentioned, you wanna have your keyword in here. So you can see here, example title tag would be best smoker reviews guide for 2021. Now again, what are the potential issues you want to look into and identify for title tags? It could be missing from the page completely, as in the page doesn't have a title tag. It's a duplicate of another page, as in multiple pages have the exact same title tag. It does not contain the keywords. It's more than 60 characters. Again, does that mean it's an issue? Is 61 characters an issue? Is 65, 68, is 70 characters an issue? No, but it can be. So it depends, again, as we mentioned previously, it's more about pixel width than it is about the actual number of characters, but it's just an indicator, hey, if it's over 60 characters, you may want to shorten it to get in that 50 to 60 character range. Likewise, if it's less than 30 characters, it's probably not optimized, and you should really try and increase it, trying to add some more, if nothing else, for targeting keywords, but also on top of that, just like CTR, and getting more clicks through to your page. Now, all of these issues can be identified within Screaming Frog, besides one, which is the does not contain keywords. Now, if you want to identify that, here's what you do. You export this data from Screaming Frog. You combine this with the previous modules training on how to do keyword research on a page by page level. Once you have the main keyword for that page, then you basically cross reference that in a spreadsheet and you check, hey, does this title tag contain this main keyword? It's a very, very simple formula. And if you don't know how to do that, then learn because spreadsheets is a huge part of doing SEO well. Now, moving on to the Screaming Frog tutorial, how to actually check for these things. Again, it's the same thing. You scroll down to the title section, the page title section, and then you look at things. So missing, in this case, there are zero, but duplicate, there are 60. So you can see here, these are all duplicate title tags. So you can see here, this one here, Pursue Fitness 2020 Seamless Farm Black, and it's Seamless Leggings Black, and so on. They're exactly the same title. Now, what would I want to do in this case? Well, I'd want to either change them, or I'd want to canonicalize the pages if they're very, very, very similar. In this case, they are actually different products. One is leggings and one is a fung. So they're actually different products. Or well, here's another one, it's an easier example. Sports bra gray, sports bra blue. In this case, these are not canonicalized or anything, so this is a more of a technical SEO thing. In my opinion, I would want to merge them into a single page. So either, again, directly merging them and having the option on the page, or keeping both of them for users, but then having a canonical tag that points both of them together to say, 
hey, the original page of this one is, is over here. And basically, all of these variations, there's only two I can see here, but these variations would be a single page in the eyes of search engines. Now, again, that is technical SEO, and it's not really on page. But again, this is the type of thing I'm looking at when I'm doing this. But in short, we can basically see here, there's potential issues here that all of these have, all of these ones here, these are the same, this is the same, this is the same. They have the same title tag. So I'd want to go through this and see which of these do I need to change, or what is the appropriate action to take based on that. Again, it can be just changing the title tag so it's unique, but it could also be, as I mentioned previously, hey, maybe we actually just want to merge the pages. Maybe we have two pages that are the same. Maybe we want to merge them, or maybe there's some other issue with the overall site architecture and everything like that. Other things we can look at inside of Screaming Frog are the length issue. So you can see here over 60 characters, where here's all the ones that are over 60 characters, and you can see the length here. Now, 62, is that an issue? It's probably okay. However, some of these, like 81, that's probably an issue. 83 is probably an issue. So again, I would just look through these and just see exactly where we can kind of reduce the length of these keywords. Again, if needed, now again, I would normally export this data and actually do a proper analysis of the title tags, but just some pages that have potential issues. You can likewise do the same for below 30 characters. Here's some with really, really um, small, like short title tags. You hear wishlist has just gymwear UK, and it's really short. Now again, this shouldn't actually be indexable. You see this is an indexable page. It's a wishlist. It shouldn't be indexable whatsoever. Um, so that's actually a different issue. But again, by looking at these things that have potential issues, it gives us other potential issues as well, not just directly. It's not directly that below 30 characters is an issue, but it could be a sign of other issues also. Right, you can also do the same for pixels, so over 561 pixels, rather than just characters. You can see here, here's ones that are over 561 uh, pixels. And again, pixels is because W is much wider than I, right? So it's not just the character length, it's actually the pixel length of the title. But that's basically types of things you can look at within, again, Screaming Frog for the page titles. Next, we have the meta description. And again, the meta description is the little description of this page that shows in the Google search results below the URL and below the title. Now, again, what potential issues do we want to look at here? Well, here are a few. Number one, it's missing from the page. If the page doesn't have a meta description, it is something to look into. Now, is that going to be the end of the world? No, it's not that big of a deal. But especially if you're ranking on the first page or the second page, it becomes a much more important ordeal. So I would personally prioritize this based on, again, the current rankings of the site. Again, to do that, you can't do that inside of Screaming Frog. You want to really pull the output into a spreadsheet and then do some work with the old spreadsheets. Beyond that, you can look at, again, duplicates from other pages. If this is happening, it's probably either because you're using some sort of templates or some real just bad setup in general. Uh, it's, it's not a good thing. So again, this can usually lead to finding technical issues with the site setup. Usually, you can also look at, again, the length, which is over 155 characters and less than 70 characters. So again, let's do the whole thing again inside of Screaming Frog. And again, this is very, very simple. We go down to the meta description section, and lo and behold, there is missing. Okay, so we have two pages here with meta descriptions missing. We have wish list and returns. Now, what do we know from this? Again, we can spot this and say, we don't need the wish list page index whatsoever. It, it's, it's not for search engines. It shouldn't be indexable. Um, so we shouldn't index this whatsoever. And returns, I'm presuming this is a returns policy. Um, so again, it has user value, but it's not really important. So we don't really need a meta description. So it's not really an issue. Right? So this isn't an issue whatsoever. These are perfectly fine. How about duplicates? We can see here there's 1,111 duplicates, which is absolutely crazy. But let's have a look through them. So you can see here, these top first three here, they're all product variants. If you, if you look how the address here, the bottom here, you can see Pursue Fitness, Gel Padded Lifting Straps, Black, White. Pursue Fitness, Gel Padded Lifting Straps, Black. And then the last one is black orange. These are all variants, and each variant has the exact same meta description. Now, is this an issue? I mean, it's not particularly an issue, but what, again, this is really useful for now is I know I'd want to, again, I want to canonicalize all these pages, essentially merging them, either directly merging them or just doing it from an SEO perspective to tell search engines, hey, these are all the same page. Likewise, you can see here the next one, they're exactly the same. It's variants, right? See here, these two, they're both variants. And pretty much all of these you're going to see in here are actually just variants. So this is a great way of identifying var product variants that we can then canonicalize or merge together. The other thing you'll see here, this is all pagination. This isn't an issue. I don't really care about pagination. I'm presuming that it's all set up correctly with 
Relic was next, Relic was previous, um, but it probably is, and again, that's more of a technical SEO issue. Again, this is pagination, so none of this down here is an issue. This is all variants, you see they're exactly the same, but they're all product variants. Every single one of these, again, we can reduce that by not having all these pages, just having all these as just one, right? So again, we're looking into this, and does that mean, oh, it's missing or it's a duplicate? Does that mean it's an issue? No, it just means there's something to look further into. Again, pagination isn't a problem whatsoever, but some of these are variants, which leads to another issue, which is again more on the technical SEO side, not the on-page SEO side. And beyond that, we have the length issues. Right? And sometimes it can be too big. You see over 155 characters here. And sometimes, and again, you can just look into these. Is that a page that's important? Do you want to optimize this? Okay, let's reduce that a little bit. Or sometimes it can be too small and it's only below 70 characters. Again, hey, maybe here's some pages that we want to increase it a little bit. Right? So you can see here, this one's pretty bad. Right? Muscle Farm UK stock is free shipping over 50 pounds. Right? That's, that's more title tag length than, than meta description length. So again, these ones, actually, I would want to go in and increase them. Again, skipping the pagination, which shouldn't really be in this list. If we put it in a spreadsheet, we'd remove all that so we're not looking at it. Um, but basically, for these ones here, you can see all of them are really, really short. I just want to go ahead and increase them. Again, presuming these pages are actually important and we actually want to keep the pages because another thing that could be a sign that is less than 70 characters but hey, maybe this just isn't an important page that we want to focus on. But that's basically how you do this. And then also you have pixel, like over 1,011 pixels and below 400 pixels. Again, designed to look at the same thing, but on a pixel length rather than a character length. Next up, we have the H1 or the heading one, which is the main heading on the page. Ideally, there should be one of them, which is actually gonna be one of the first potential issues to look into, right? So these potential issues can be Missing from the page, again, same as previously. You should have a H1 on this page. Duplicates from other pages, again, realistically, you shouldn't have the same H1 across multiple pages. Multiple on a single page. And again, some people say, well, Google said this isn't an issue. And I agree, it's not gonna like ruin your site by any means. But generally speaking, it's just best practice just to make sure you only have one and it just makes the topics of your page very, very clear. So again, ideally, I just want one H1 on the page. And if you see more than that, it's usually gonna be a setup issue with how they're, they're setting up and structuring their site. And it also, again, does not contain the keyword. We can't do that inside of Screaming Frog, but what we can do is we can just eyeball them. And we can just run through and just say, generally speaking, is this client optimizing the H1s to have the keyword in it, or is it just completely random stuff, right? I can figure that out looking at a site within just like 30 seconds just by clicking through to a few pages of the main pages and just checking, are they optimized in the H1? If they are, good. If they're not, then again, the rest of the site is probably going to be the same. So opening up Screaming Frog again, let's scroll down to the H1 section. Again, this is very, very easy. And all I'm gonna do is click missing first. And as you can see here, all these pages, which is actually a lot, it's quite surprising, are missing apparently 910. I think it was 1,600, um, or 1,500 says here all, I'm missing H1s, which is absolutely crazy. Um, so that is an issue. Now, what we can do from here is we could actually, if we wanted to, open this up in a browser. So let me do that. So I've opened this up in my browser, and I've did a quick little bookmark click to check the headings. And as you can see here, the mistake is that they have the product name, which should be a H1, set as a H2. So there is no H1 on this page. Again, is it a major issue? No, it's not, but I'd prefer if they fix this ideally and change this over to a H1. And I don't even know why this is happening. There's some crappy theme developers, obviously, that just didn't mark up the, the product names correctly. So that is an issue, again, really more on a technical side, really, but it is an on-page issue in terms of like structuring and marking up this content. I, again, I just wanna change this over to H1. Should be a relatively easy fix in the theme files, presuming there's no CSS issues. Again, a little bit beyond the scope of this video, but that is an issue that was spotted across, what was it, 900 pages. Next up, we have duplicate H1s. You can see here, there's apparently 603 of them. Now, opening this up, I'm seeing actually none of these are issues because this is pagination, so obviously it will be the same. Pagination again. This is an issue, this is bestsellers. I, I usually, it depends on the context, um, best sellers is usually not something people are looking for in search engines, right? So sometimes there may just no indexes or at least just change it. I mean, it's easy to change this over to men's best sellers, women's best sellers, which again, it should be anyway, because it's what, that's what it is. Um, but you can also like just no index pages potentially because there's, there's no value to search engines whatsoever. And it's, it's not really a helpful page. Um, beyond that, again, 
these ones are examples. This is pagination. This is pagination again. Most of these are pagination. Again, if you don't know what pagination is, it's when you're scrolling through, you see page one, two, three, four, five, or next, previous, and so on. That's pagination. So you can see here, they have, say, 20 products on the home page, on, on this main collection page, and on page two, they have another 20 products, and on page three, they have another 20 products, and so on. So you're just clicking next, 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 see the next list of products. That's what pagination is, and obviously, it will have the same H1. Um, it could potentially change it slightly because it's, say, page two or something, it's not a big deal. So they may actually change, but I mean, this is fine. This isn't an issue. Pagination is fine. Again, as long as it's set up correctly, a technical SEO aspect here. Next up, this is an issue, actually. This here is tags, I believe. Um, so it's either tags or um, blog posts, but I'm pretty sure these are tags. So these are all tags here. So again, they have the same H1. That is an issue. You see, every single thing on their blog has the same H1. So this is either tags or blog posts. I'm not 100% sure just looking at it. Um, they may actually be blog posts, but nonetheless, uh, basically, if they all have the exact same H1, that is an issue. I think they're tags because the H1 is the same. So again, in this case, I would want to not change them. I don't want to have a different H1 for the tags. I want to just no index all the tags completely, maybe just delete the tags completely from the blog unless they have some sort of user experience um, value. If it's useful for users to click through them, that's great. Otherwise, just get rid of them altogether and it's better for SEO anyway because you don't have all these this low quality pages basically, which is just a slightly different filter of product uh, of blog posts. Right? There's no unique content on there, it's just low quality overall. You can also look at here length issues, but I don't really think it's a big deal with your H1. You can have over 70 characters, obviously there is none on this site. And having more than one H1 on a page is realistically an issue. Again, it's not a major issue, but it's still an issue that I'd want to address. Okay, so you can see here, there's a page here, best workout leggings, there's two occurrences, right? And you see all of these have two H2s, H1, sorry. So what we can do again, let's open this up, let's have a look at it. So I pulled out this blog post and you can see the issue here. Previously, I thought there were tags. I just remembered that tag that she has in, in Shopify has slash tagged in URL. So I was wrong. These are actually blog posts and they actually have more than one and duplicate H1s. This is an issue with their overall theme setup again. So you can see here, they have fitness blog at the top, which is H1. And they have the blog post name, which is best workout leggings UK. Again, also as a H1. This is marked up incorrectly. Realistically, this shouldn't be a heading of any kind, and if it is, maybe a H2 or something, but realistically, you probably wouldn't have it marked up as a heading altogether. Um, it's really more for, for users and design than anything else. And then this should be the H1, which it already is, right? Or I would completely redesign this personally and probably just put this little section up here, up here for the blog post itself, but it doesn't matter. The point is, um, this isn't a good practices and best practices. They have two H1s on the page, and they have duplicate H1s, which is fitness blog across every single blog post. If you click on number one, girls sports leggings, and we open this blog post up, you see fitness blog, again, is a H1 on this page. We open up best vegan proteins, again, fitness blog is a H1 on this page. Now, Google's smart enough to know this? Yeah, probably, but again, why not just have it right from the first place and just make sure that it's all set up correctly? It's just best practices. Next up, we have content, which is obviously just the pages content, like the blog posts, the information, the products, all that jazz, right? Very, very simple. What are potential issues to look into? It's duplicate page content, as in if this exact page is a duplicate of another, that is an issue, it's low quality. If it's low volume of content on the page, if there's a low amount of like, if there's only 100 words on a page, well, that's not really that good. It's not really much unique content, or especially with tags. If there's no unique content on the page, that is definitely a major issue, okay? So there's things like that to look into. And then finally, just in general, this isn't a screaming frog thing, but just look through the site. And is the content just pretty low quality in general? Well, that is something you also want to check for because it's gonna really be a big overhaul and a lot of work on the overall site. So again, opening up Screaming Frog, you wanna scroll down and guess what you are looking for in here. It's not pagination, it's not directives, it's not reflan, it's not AMP, it's not structured data, it's not page speed. Keep going, where are we gonna find it? It is content. Ta-da, and here's what we can see here. We have exact duplicates, which is apparently zero, which is good. There's low content pages, which is apparently zero, which is good, but it actually is not counting some stuff like tags and stuff, which we found separately in our own process previously anyway. 
And then you have these other options, but I don't enable actually checking for them, but you can check for things like near duplicates and spelling errors and grammar errors, grammar errors, sorry, but I don't look into those things. Now, the other thing is more manual searches. Is the overall quality content on the site? Well, good, let's check it out, okay? So I've opened up this website and let's click through. So the biggest category, the most popular category is shop women's leggings. So let's click through that because obviously there's probably a big seller for them. And you can see here they have content. You can see here they have this, that they have read more, right? So they have a decent amount of content. Is it actually well written? I have no idea. I don't really have time to read it. Um, but you can kind of see there is content on here. If you click another link, you have internal links, which is great. And then they have lots and lots of information here. Now again, is that the right information? Is it the right intent? I have no idea. We're not checking at this stage. I just want to see, do they have like a decent depth of content across their pages? We can also go into other things. Let's do women's, let's do shorts, right? Again, generally speaking across the pages, do they have it? Yes, I'd say in general, they have a decent amount of content across all of these different pages. We can also scroll down. Do they have a blog in here somewhere? It's a fitness blog. And you can also check out their blog. Is there good content across their blog? Well. They have some recent posts. You have 36 levels of it, massage gun reviews, and they have a blog that they're posting on, right? So the images aren't loading probably because I'm blocking something. But yeah, they have a decent amount of content. Overall, the content looks decent enough. Now again, is it good? I'm not really looking at into it that much here. I'd probably look a little bit further into it. It was actually a client or something. But you can see here, they have at least a, de a decent depth of content. And then you can overall measure how good quality do you think this is as well. And just eyeball this from looking at the overall site. Again, this is a specific page by page level, but we find that with the Screaming Frog issues. But we're also just trying to figure out overall is the site set up well in terms of content. Next up, we have images. So images are, well, images, pictures in your page, right? It's very, very simple. Now, there's two common things you'll see here that you really want to look out for. It's really, really big images. Now, what is a really, really big image? It just depends on the site and, and what you're showing. Um, but generally speaking, if you've seen the images that are like a megabyte or something like that, that's probably an issue. And Screaming Frog, I like to check for all this stuff. I think they check for 100 kilobytes plus. And also, you have missing alt text. Again, if you don't know what that is, then watch the previous videos where we explain it. But let's just show how exactly you find that. Again, open it up, Screaming Frog. Scroll down or up in this case. Look for images. So where are the images? So we're scrolling through here. See a lot of technical issues here. We can go through directives, pagination, canonicals, images. There we go. Okay. Now let's have a look through this. Obviously, we have all images. But let's go over 100 kilobytes. You can see here this image is 300 kilobytes. Is that particularly an issue? It's not huge, but it's not small. So I mean, you could potentially look into can you make it smaller? Again, this isn't this is an issue is potential issues, meaning it's things to investigate further to again, you don't want to look through 1600 pages one by one by one. So this is just highlights of here's places to look specifically. Okay. Also, we have missing alt text. You can see here these images here are all missing alt text There's 52 of them. You can see what the image is. You can also see extra information about it, like the in links to it, so how many times it's linked to. And you can see here a whole bunch of images that are missing alt text. So you can go ahead and find out where those link, the images are, are linked from or, or shown on, pages are shown on, and then go ahead and add alt text to it. It's really, really, really simple. Okay, it's not complicated. It's not a major issue, but any stretch of imagination is just something that I'd recommend doing. And the final thing we're going to order is internal links. Now, we mentioned again, internal links are just links between different pages on your own website. It's very, very simple. There's a few potential issues that you want to look out for here. The first one is links to 404 pages. 404 page is a missing page. So if you link into a page that is missing, well, it's a broken link. That's what we call it, okay? Another potential issue to look into is links to redirects. If you link into a page that redirects from another page, it's really not ideal. It's better to look directly to the correct page. Likewise, if you link to a page that redirects to a page, which redirects to a page, which redirects to a page, you get the idea. This is called a redirect chain. Again, it's not an ideal situation. Again, don't link from A to B, which redirects to C, which redirects to D, which redirects to E, which links to F, right? You just want to have um, a link from A to, to E or F or whatever the end page is, right? Don't send them through a redirect chains. It, it's just silly. Again, it's a waste of crawl budget and other reasons like that. Again, technical stuff we'll get into later. You also, in general, don't want to link to pages that are no index and are low importance pages. So let's open up Screaming Frog and let's go through how exactly you can do some of this stuff. Now, normally, again, I don't do this inside of Screaming Frog. So I'm just going to figure out how exactly most people do this if they want to use Screaming Frog, which I imagine 
is you go up to um, lists like this. So you can see here, OK, redirects. And then you can actually basically just open up these lists. And you can go into this in links section, which is linked into these pages. And here is a list you can export of all the links going into these pages that are free or, uh, that are redirects, basically. So redirect the pages, you can see here, from this URL to this URL. You can see all the different links, basically. Here, you can also see where they are. So are they content? You see some of these are navigation and so on. So you can basically see all of these different links in here. Now, again, normally, I wouldn't do it this way. Normally, I export this in spreadsheets. And I can literally just pull out a whole list of these immediately of everything that I just mentioned previously. But if you're doing it in Screaming Frog, here's one way you can do that. Likewise, you can pull up client error. So this is 404 pages, right? And you can see here, scroll up, click all of these. I know obviously not all of these are, most of these are CSS pages. So let's grab the ones that aren't CSS pages, which is this, this, and this. And you can see, again, the in links to these pages. You can see here, blog post, this blog post has a link to this fin, which is a tag. So it's fine. It's not an issue. Um, but again, just go ahead and delete it. I'm not sure why it has a link to it. It was a 404 page, but so on. So again, this is just how you'd access those links. Again, doing it all inside of Screaming Frog. You can also go up to HTML and get a list of, sorry, wrong one, um, HTML, or the list of the pages on the site. And you'll see here also you have the, the indexability status here, which is indexable and non-indexable. If you want to filter it, you can do this and basically switch this around. And you have all the non-indexable pages just like this as well. And then also, you can click on these as well. And you can see the in links to these, either one by one, as you can see here. Or of course, you can just select a whole bunch of them, scroll through all of them, and just go, OK, all of these are non-indexable. Here's links to all the pages that are non-indexable. You can see here, there are 5,305. So that is ones, again, that you'd want to look into. You can also filter this down by, say, hyperlinks specifically, which is 5,247. And it just reduces that overall list. You can see a lot of these are just review links for some reason, which links to this page, which apparently is a non-indexable page. Now, again, does this mean it's an issue? No, maybe it needs to be there from a user experience point of view, even though you don't want the page indexed. But it is just things to look further into. And that's pretty much how you would use Screaming Frog and a manual investigation, and ideally spreadsheets also, to really decide on what issues are on the site from an on-page SEO perspective. Again, tying everything together, because we highlighted, OK, what are those issues? And then here's how to use a tool to find those issues really, really quickly, and how to spot and look into what exactly we need to change. Now, a lot of this, as you saw, really ties in really, really well with technical SEO, which is the next module. So that's what we're going to cover there. We're going to go through how exactly to look at all these things, what all this stuff means. I kept talking about things like canonical tags and stuff. You may not know what any of that means. So that's what we're going to cover in the next module. If you're liking these videos so far, if you're learning something so far, please do me a favor. Please tap the little like button below. It helps out promote these videos, helps out the channel a ton. I'd really appreciate it. If you have any questions, anything I missed out, leave a comment below. And really, that wraps up this on-page SEO module. Again, I probably could have showed a little bit more on how we actually do this inside of spreadsheets, but the exact same process. We're looking at the exact same things. I just didn't want to give away the exact spreadsheets that I'm using for every single part of this. But the outcome is exactly the same. You can use Screaming Frog to collect the exact same data. I use Screaming Frog to collect this data. I just organize it in a slightly different way to find these issues a little bit quicker than I did today. But again, as you can see here, it works very, very well. And it's still very, very fast. So with that said, I hope this is helpful so far. I hope you're enjoying the course so far. And I'll see you in the next module.